thank you for coming in today. Uh, I looked through, I have your application here, and I see you said you're looking for a pocket pistol, and you wanted it in 22 rimfire. That shouldn't be a problem. And now you said full auto, and in the, the box for rate of fire, you have filled in ludicrous. I do think we have the pistol for you. That would be a Trejo Model 1. Thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, here today at the James D. Julia Auction House, taking a look at some of the machine guns that they're selling in their upcoming Spring of 2017 auction. And, as I just alluded to, today we have a Trejo Model 1. This is, in fact, a full-auto, little tiny machine pistol that seems pretty goofy, but in reality, as is usually the case, there are good explanations for all of its characteristics. Now this, this pistol was manufactured in a little town called Zacatlan in Puebla, Mexico, and it was run by, well the factory was run by the Trejo company. Nothing to do with Trejo, Danny Trejo. Uh, this was in fact Alexander Trejo Solis and uh, Gabriel Trejo. So it was a little family business, and in 1948 they started making handguns, and by 1970 to 72 they'd made like 100,000 pistols. They did four different models, which were uh, descriptively named the models 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, 1 and 2 were both rimfire, 22 caliber rimfire pistols. This is a Model 1. Model 2 was a little bit bigger, had an 11 round mag instead of this thing's 8 round magazine. The Model 2 was a 380. I believe they also made some uh, 32 caliber versions for the Mexican military, although I don't know that those were ever actually adopted. And then in theory the Model 4 was a 9 by 19 locked breech pistol. I haven't actually seen one that would have been legally much more difficult for them to make in Mexico at the time. The vast majority of the guns that you see are going to be models 1 and to some extent 2. Now what's interesting about these is that in Mexico at the time, full auto was only restricted in center fire cartridges, which makes sense from a military point of view. But it left this loophole that if you wanted to make or buy or own a full auto rim fire firearm, you could do that legally. So Trejo started making the Tipo Rafaga, or uh, high speed repeat, the machine pistol versions of the models 1 and 2 pistols. And of their 100,000 pistols made, about 13,000 of those were these little machine pistols. They were legal to own in Mexico at the time. And while I don't know that there's a whole lot of purpose to having an 8 round capacity 22 caliber pistol that fires at 12 to 1500 rounds per minute, it sure would be a fun thing. I think that is the that was probably the driving market force behind their sales was, hey, if I can get this in full auto, why not? And by the way, they are select fire, so you can just as easily set it to semi-auto and have a nice little plinking pistol, or flip the lever down to Rafaga and dump the magazine in about a tenth of a second. Until 1968, it was still legal to import transferable machine guns, or import machine guns from abroad and register them as transferable. That became a problem in 1968 when the Gun Control Act passed, and one of the things it did was it didn't end, it didn't close the machine gun registry, but it did prohibit the importation of transferable machine guns from outside the United States. So at that point, you could no longer register one of these as transferable, and I'm sure that had a major impact on Trejo's business. But what really killed the Trejo company was that in 1971, Mexican gun control regulations became dramatically stricter, and possession of these sorts of pistols became basically impossible for Mexican citizens as well. At that point, the company just folded. By 1972, they were gone. All the, the leftover parts had been sold, magazines sold, done, uh, out of business. Take a quick view up close before we go out and shoot this little guy. Uh, it is basically modeled after the 1911, although it is a blowback pistol. You'll notice that the hammer comes up high enough that you cannot see the sights when the hammer is down, so that tells you that it has gone click and is empty. Uh, simple blowback. You'll notice the barrel doesn't move, so no locking system on this. You have a safety on the left side. This is fire. That is safe. You have the fire selector lever here on the other side. Up, that R is Rafaga, uh, full auto. Down is semi-auto. Let um, me take the magazine out. The magazine release is a standard button there. And this is an eight round single stack, pretty simple little magazine. So in the full auto mode, 
when the slide comes forward, it trips the uh, the sear and drops the hammer again. In semi-auto mode, it does not. You'll notice hecho in Mexico, so made in Mexico, serial number. And on this side we have all of the standard Trejo markings. Uh, pistola, caliber 22, tipo Rafaga, that means it is a machine pistol, and the manufacturing location is Zacatlan, Puebla. It is a Modelo 1, and you'll find that that number changes on the other versions. The apple there is because the typical, the main industry in Zacatlan is apple orchards, so they kind of chose that as the, the company emblem, and then a Mexican patent number. There's the, the apple and the Trejo name again in the grips. This is just our uh, slide release functions just like a 1911 would. This is going to be a super fun little pistol. I think this is utterly devoid of practical utility, aside from massive giggle factor. Let's do another. Now to put things in context, while the full auto versions of the Trejo are certainly the ones that get the most attention, the vast majority of the pistols that Trejo made were not. They were just semi-auto pistols in 380 and 22. Uh, but of course it's fun to take a look at this one, and despite it being completely impractical for anything other than giggling in uh, full auto, it's really good at making people giggle. Um, I would warn people that a 22, a small machine pistol is a dangerous firearm to handle. You do have to know what you're doing. It's very easy to point something like this in the wrong direction and have major safety issues. Uh, but if you're comfortable with machine guns and machine pistols, it's a really fun little thing to have. So if you would like to have it, it is of course coming up for sale at Julia. Take a look at the description text below and uh, you'll find a link to their catalog page about this pistol. And you can get the whole rundown on all the, the spare parts and magazines and everything else that comes with it, as well as their pictures and description. And uh, you can place a bid on it right there through the website if you're interested. Thanks for watching.